Coming up, your electric bill may go up again. Mitt Romney wins Illinois, and Nathan Deal launches Go Bill Georgia. Your News Valdosta starts now. Welcome to News Valdosta. I'm Samantha Carino. State utility regulators will allow Georgia Power to close two outdated coal-fired plants. It's a decision that complies with federal environmental rules, but it may come at a price to power customers. To make up for the lost electricity, Georgia Power can replace the coal plants with energy from natural gas plants or purchase power from outside sources. But customers will have to pay more for it. Public Service Commissioner Stan Wise says customers must pay higher power bills to prevent potential brownouts and blackouts. There were 54 delegates, delegates at stake at yesterday's Illinois prim primary, and Mitt Romney is going home with the majority of them. Republican voters took the, to the polls and once again proved they are not ready to unite behind a single GOP presidential candidate. CNN's Elizabeth Corden wraps up the re results. Another Tuesday, another must-win contest for Mitt Romney. The former Massachusetts governor claims victory in Illinois. And you know, uh, elections are about choices. And today, hundreds of thousands of people in Illinois have joined millions of people across the country to join our cause. Romney is not leaving Thank Illinois you. with the entire pie of delegates. He'll have to share proportionally with the competition. Rick Santorum will take a slice. He finished second. Thank the former you. senator Thank opted you. to spend primary day in Pennsylvania. Tonight. We're going to win downstate. We're going to win central Illinois. We're going to win western Illinois. Uh, we won the areas that conservatives and Republicans populate. And we're very happy about that. We're happy about the delegates we're going to get to. Also absent from Illinois, Newt Gingrich. He's focusing his attention where he's done best, the conservative South. Gingrich is channeling all his campaign resources into Saturday's primary in Louisiana and taking on his toughest competition there, Santorum. Uh, he lost the Senate in, in Pennsylvania by the largest margin in the history of the state for any incumbent senator getting reelected. And so you have to ask yourself, is that really the background to try to take on Barack Obama? Ron Paul is on the West Coast meeting with supporters in California, still lagging in the delegate count, but still vowing to stay in the race. And with the Republican convention still five months away, this race has a long way to go. I'm Elizabeth Corden reporting. Georgia will soon face a shortage in skilled labor. Many workers in the industry are facing retirement while younger generations are not learning the necessary skills to replace them. Hoping to help this problem, Governor Nathan Deal has launched Go Build Georgia. This is a statewide program that aims to educate and inform businesses, educators, and students about the need for skilled craft labor. According to the study in the Psychological Science Journal, police officers may experience memory loss after at least 60 seconds of extreme physical activity, such as chasing or arguing with suspects. After both male and female officers were tested, researchers found those who used less those who use less intense physical activity remember more crucial details about their target than those who do engage in it. The study proved officers are not incapable, but that exhaustion causes lack of focus. Coming up, the state house passes the tax bill, an earthquake shakes Mexico City, and your local weather. Stay with us. The Valdosta Area Rotary Clubs have united with the First Foundation for Childhood Literacy and the Dolly Parton Imagination Library to mail age-appropriate books to registered children in Lowndes County, ages from birth to age five. Your local Rotary Clubs are raising funds and taking donations. For more information, call 244-5159. Want you help us? A Childhood Literacy Project of the Valdosta Area Rotary Clubs. Welcome back to News Valdosta. A tax plan sailed through the State House yesterday, 30 hours after it was introduced. 
Both Republicans and Democrats strongly supported House Bill 386, saying that Georgia would get new jobs and also protect the ones that they already have. The Senate can vote on the bill tomorrow. A key element of this bill is that some internet purchases would have a sales tax put on them, which would bring $81 million to the state. No one ever knew, no one knows what ever happened to famous aviator Amelia Earhart, but investigators think they have a clue. A photo taken three months after Earhart's disappearance 75 years ago shows what appears to be a picture of the landing gear of the plane Lockheed Electra. More research will begin soon with a privately funded group going on deep ocean searches and recovering. Hundreds of homes suffered severe damage and destruction as a massive earthquake struck southern Mexico yesterday. The quake registered 7.4 on the Richter scale while having its epicenter about 200 miles from Mexico City. Over 500 homes were damaged while 11 people were injured and there were no deaths. The aftershock effects of the quake were felt even hours after the quake, which according to the U.S. Geological Survey had a depth of about 12.4 miles. Currently, government helicopters are continuing to survey the area while officials prepare shelters for all displaced residents. Pollen counts are at a record level in Georgia. The, this week's pollen count is way above the record, which was 6,013 set in April of 1999. Yesterday afternoon, the particle count measured 9,369. Taking a look at your local weather, the high today is 84 degrees and a low of 61 degrees. There is a 40% chance of precipitation and the warmer temperatures are expected to continue throughout the week. Coming up, a breast cancer support group meets at SGMC, Mr. Universe turns 100, and your campus events. Stay with us. My Jamie, she was my baby girl, a precious baby girl. When Jamie was a teenager, she would spend her lunch hours going to the tanning salons. I didn't realize how dangerous they were. If you tan when you're young, your risk for melanoma are increased by 75%. That's huge. What I would say to mothers that allow their daughters to tan, no mother should have to visit their daughter in a cemetery. One person an hour dies from melanoma. Jamie's hour was at one o'clock in the afternoon on Friday, March 16th, 2007. I hope no one else has to mark their hour. This message is brought to you by the American Academy of Dermatology. Welcome back to News Valdosta. I'm Samantha Carino. South Georgia Medical Center will host SGMC Best Buddies, a local support group for breast cancer survivors, next Tuesday night at the Perlman Comprehensive Se Cancer Center Conference Room. Participation is free of charge. All breast cancer survivors are encouraged to attend. For additional information, please visit the South Georgia Medical Center webpage. Taking a look at our campus events. Valdosta State head women's basketball coach Kylie Hill was named the Dactronic South Region Coach of the Year on Tuesday. Hill led the Lady Blazers to their best season since 2008 and an appearance in the South Region Championship game. The Lady Blazers finished the year with a 22-8 record. Tomorrow, VSU journalism students will have the chance to meet Mayor John Gale for a mock press conference. The students from Ted Geltner's advanced journalism class will get hands-on experience in municipal reporting as well as interviewing a top elected official. The event will be held in the city council chambers at 12.45 p.m. This Friday, the Valdosta Symphony Orchestra will feature favorites as a part of the youth concert series. It will take place at 10 a.m. in Whitehead Auditorium. On Saturday, the VSO, VSO will host pianist Carl Kramer. He will perform the Rachmaninoff Piano Concert No. 2, which contains the most romantic and famous melodies. This will take place at 8 p.m. in Whitehead. For more information about both events, contact the VSO or go to the VSU Music website. According to the Daily Mail, the former Mr. Universe, Manahar Ike, was just has just turned 100 years old. The 4'11 bodybuilder is living testimony to others approaching his age 
that good health is still possible. Ike says that despite his struggle with, with poverty in prison, he is still in great shape due to a healthy diet, no smoking, and never having drank alcohol a day in his life. Thanks for watching News Valdosta. I'm Samantha Carino. Have a good day. We'll see you next time.